السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفاه نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وبعد my dear brothers and sisters I'd love to welcome you to another uh, live edition of your program Gardens of the Pious In the beginning of the program I turn to Allah the Almighty with sincere dua that may Allah grant us all forgiveness may Allah the Almighty have mercy on all of us May Allah teach us the useful knowledge that will help us to worship Him in the best way that He likes and uh, most importantly accept the best of our deeds. Allahumma amin. Today insha'Allah we'll begin a new chapter, chapter number 94. And uh, the chapter is still in the book of etiquette. Chapter 94 deals with honoring the guests. And honoring the guests in Islam isn't some social traditions or some habits simply due to our cultural customs. No. Honoring the guest is a great act of worship. So the acts of worship in Islam aren't limited to mere praying, fasting, or, uh, you know, performing hajj. These acts of worship which mainly to strengthen the tie between the servant and his creator. He is the greatest beneficiary out of that. So I benefit out of my prayer. I benefit out of my fasting. In the dunya and in the hereafter. Improving my manners. Getting close to Allah. Granting me forgiveness. Accepting my deed. And so on. Then there comes the importance of these ibadat to reflect upon your relationship with the rest of the creation, whether human beings divided into Muslims or non-Muslims or even other living creatures such as animals for innocence. So the person who benefits out of the acts of worship, the prescribed ibadat and rituals, you will find them automatically behaving in the best manner with other creatures. Allah the Almighty says, "Inna salat tanha an al wal munkar." Verily, the prayer forbids a person against every evil and every sin, against illicit relationship, against injustice, against transgression. So, if the person is truly offering the prayer properly, that should reflect upon his relationship with others. Fasting isn't only about experiencing hunger and thirst. No. The Prophet ﷺ said, One who's fasting does not stop him from acting upon falsehood and saying what is false. Then Allah is not interested in his hunger and thirst. Then in this case, his fasting is mere suffering. He's hungry and he's starving for no reason. So it is not about losing weight. It is not simply because it's a good opportunity to have a mandatory diet. No. It's much deeper than that. What is it? In order to be righteous. That is the main reason why Allah Almighty prescribed fasting. Being righteous includes feeling sympathy for the poor, feeling pity for the needy, and rushing to assist them because... If you get to experience some hunger for a little bit while you're certain that at the time of breaking your fast you will have all the delicious food that you desire and the drinks, it gives you an assurance so that you're patient and meanwhile you know in a little bit you shall eat and you shall drink, you shall make it up. What about the person 
who does not see a light by the end of the tunnel? What about people who live in areas where they have droughts and famine? It's very scary. It is our duty as Muslims to feel the same of those who are suffering and once we have the same feeling, we rush to help. And we will not consider it nor perceive it as if we're doing them a favor. No, we're doing ourselves a big favor. So the Prophet ﷺ talks about one of these practices which some people look at it as social uh, or human while it is pure religious. Rasulullah ﷺ says, By Allah, he does not believe. Who doesn't believe? Man bata shab'anan, the person who goes to sleep while he's full. He had plenty of food. وَجَارُهُ إِلَىٰ جَنْبِهِ جَائِعَ While his next door neighbor is starving. So he has. And he ate. He ate to his fill. And his pantry is full. And he knows that his neighbor is hungry. Doesn't have anything to eat. You're stuck in food for how long? Next month, two months to come. While you see somebody is starving. This is a sign of lacking of Iman. Because of that, brothers and sisters, uh, and I have lived in both cultures, in Muslim cultures, and whether in, in Muslim countries or non-Muslim countries, and also have lived amongst non-Muslims in their culture. Materialism has become so dominant that the person only thinks about himself or herself. Sometimes even the couple who live in together, whether in halal or haram, married or a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Materialism is given precedence. So even at the time of paying the check, each one pays for himself or herself separate. While it is very interesting to see Muslims, whether Muslims of Indo-Pak background or an Arabic background or anywhere you find them fighting as who would pay the check sometimes the waiter would say as I have heard it myself once in London in the UK I wish I have friends like you guys I wish I could have friends like you because unlike what he experienced he saw Muslims uh, everyone is wearing a beard and Offer, no, 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 wallahi, I'm gonna pay. Wallahi, it is my turn. And he's serious, he is so eager to host the crowd because he knows that he will be rewarded for that. And whatever he spends in hosting people, feeding them, whether they are poor or they are just mere guests, Allah the Almighty promised. Whatever you spend of shay, the word shay means a thing, anything, whether it is little, a quarter, or big. We are commanded, we are commanded to eat and drink, but not to be extravagant. So keep in balance. But being generous is a pure monotheistic trait. It is stemming from the belief that Whatever you spend, whether in honoring your guests, taking care of your neighbors, or supporting the poor and the needy, or giving somebody a loan, or giving in a voluntary charity, definitely will come back to you. And would be materialized 10 times more. We're not only talking about the moral world, like expect the world there in the hereafter. Now we're talking about also in this dunya. Subhanallah. We have heard Aisha radiallahu anha used to welcome the Asail. Asail is a true beggar, the one who really is in need. So he is begging for anything to eat. And she says, Welcome. You come to carry my provision to paradise. You are a mean of carrying my provision to paradise. We need to recover those beautiful meanings of perceiving, giving as a quality, 
perceive in giving as a privilege, not a thing that it burdens you and you're trying to slip away and you're trying to hide. No. Nowadays, people are avoiding hosting people or avoiding receiving people in their houses, even for a short period of time. Why? It will cost us some sweet, it will cost us this and this and that, and even the time you spend with the person, as long as you're discussing something lawful, hmm? socializing, visiting family members, receiving family members, you can convert all these habits into pure acts of worship. Didn't Allah the Almighty inform us that on the Day of Judgment, He will call upon Ain al mutazawirina fi Where are those who used to visit one another for my sake? Didn't the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, narrate to us about a man who visited one of his brothers in another city, and Allah the Almighty had sent to him an angel to ask him, what are you up to? He said, I'm going to visit my brother so and so. Are you going to take any loan from him? Are you going to benefit from him anything? That, that's why you are traveling such a long distance? Does he owe you any money? Why are you visiting him? This is nowadays is the question. Why? Why shall I spend time with this person? What kind of benefit will I get out of that? Why do I have to visit this person? And people make a list of, I visit him because last year he visited me. Oh, I take so much gifts equivalent to how much gifts that he or she have brought to me. I have nothing to do with Islamic traditions. This is pure materialistic. But Islamic traditions, you're doing this because you're visiting somebody, you're visiting Allah. You know that your word is with Allah the Almighty. You're taking the cake, you're taking food, you're taking whatever. You will receive a great reward for that. It is an act of charity, but he's not in need. It is an act of charity. We have figured from the hadith that even when you buy clothes or food for yourself and your family member, it's a sadaqa from you upon yourself or upon your family members. When a man came to the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and he said, uh, I have a dinar. He said, Anfiqhu ala nafsik, tasaddaq bihi ala nafsik. Spend it upon yourself as a, as a charity from you to yourself. I have another one. Spend it on your family. That's a charity from you upon your family. I have a third one. Then donate it wherever you want to do. As long as it is the right place. So all of that is perceived as ibadat. Acts of worship. You'll be rewarded for that. It's so beautiful. It is so beautiful that Allah the Almighty summarizes this whole thing in a very comprehensive reference in Surah Al-An'am when he said, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَبِذَلِكَ أُمِرْتُ وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Say, O oh Muhammad وسلم, and the command here is not limited to the person of Rasulullah Say, O oh, who you believe, every believer, you must say that because you believe in it, indeed, my prayers, my sacrifice, and my entire life, waking up, going to sleep, eating, drinking, enjoying my sexual relations, and my death, all belong to Allah, the Lord of everything that exists. There is no partner to Him. And I was commanded to do so. I'm the first to be a believer and submissive to the will of Allah the Almighty. So brothers and sisters, going to school, graduating, getting a job, earning halal provision, spending the earned provision on halal outlets, and sources, these are all ibadat, yani acts of worship. You will be rewarded for that. Amongst that is ikram al-dayf, honoring the guest. And there are many hadith on top of those hadith, the hadith which says, which links honoring the guest to the concept of faith. 
Let whoever believes in Allah and in the last day, let him honor his guest. We'll be studying this hadith. It's a sound hadith as well. But also there are some ayat, such as the verses which talk about the generosity of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. And his story has been narrated in many ayat and in many suwar. So for instance, in uh, Surah Ibrahim alayhi salam, the verses from 24 to 27, Allah Almighty says, هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ ضَيْفِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الْمُكْرَمِينَ إِذْ دَخَلُوا عَلَيْهِ فَقَالُوا سَلَامًا قَالَ سَلَامٌ قَوْمٌ مُنْكَرُونَ فَرَاغَ إِلَى أَهْلِهِ فَجَاءَ بِعِجْلٍ سَمِينٍ فقربه إليهم قال ألا تأكلون. These ayat talking about are talking about the story of Prophet Ibrahim عليه السلام when he received honorable guests. Who are the honorable guests? The angels led by Jibril عليه السلام. These verses are from 24. 27 Surat al dhariyat narrating upon us the story or a segment of the story of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam who is also known as Abu Dhifan. The word Abu as you all know means father. Abu Dhifan means a guest. He was like the father of all the guests. He would take care of them like if he was their own father. And he was the most generous person. And this is one of the reasons why Allah Almighty have taken him as a Khalil. So he is known as Khalil al-Rahman. Similarly was Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because in the hadith, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said that indeed Allah have taken Ibrahim as a Khalil and has taken me as a Khalil. These are the only two prophets who have the title of Khalil al-Rahman. And al-Khulla is a level which is higher than al-Habib, the beloved is even higher and closer to Al-Habib. So that's why we say Muhammad too is Khalilu Ar-Rahman. So now these, these ayat from 24 to 27 of Surah al dhariyat they mean, the rough meaning is that Allah the Almighty says, has the story reached you about the honor guests of Ibrahim? When they came to him and said, peace, he said in reply, permanent peace so how do we know that it says permanent peace they said salaman salaman means peace but when he said salamun that means an everlasting salam that he did not really recognize them and he said to himself those seem to be strange people from out of town so if those people are strangers and from out of town, that means they don't have a place to stay in and there was no restaurants, so they did not or they must have not eaten for a while. So what did he do? فَرَاغَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ So he rushed. He slipped away without um, feeling him, without sensing them that he is going to prepare a meal or to cook food. فَرَاغَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ So he slipped away without anybody feeling that he left and he rushed to his uh, family, to his wife and he quickly brought back بِعِجِلٍ سَمِينٍ So he slaughtered a calf, a very fat calf and he roasted it. And furthermore فَقَرَّبَهُ إِلَيْهِمْ And he brought it near to them. Then he said, will you not then eat? قال of course, the story is long. Those three angels who came to Prophet Ibrahim السلام, they disguised as human beings. And they brought him the Bishara, the news that your wife Sarah will conceive. And that's why the ayat said, فَصَكَّتْ وَجْهَهَا وَقَالَتْ عَجُوزٌ عَقِيمٌ When Sarah overheard the conversation between these three guys 
telling Ibrahim alayhi salam that uh, what kind of bishara you brought to me? They said um, that you will be a father. He's been already a father before. When Hajar alayhi salam conceived and she delivered Ismail, then he was commanded to take them to Bakka, the abandoned place from Palestine to Bakka, Mecca. So now Sarah have only given Ibrahim Hajar so that she would, he would have a child from Hajar because Sarah was sterile. Now Sarah not only is sterile, she's also old, very old. Ajuz, she's very old. And Ibrahim was over 86. So Ibrahim was old, Sarah was old. And when they were young, she was sterile. So how is it possible after besides sterility and infertility that now I'm already old as well and I would have a child. They gave him the bishara, you would have a knowledgeable child. So when Sarah heard that, she slapped her face and she said, she said I'm old and I'm still, how am I supposed to have a child? So they assured her, this is a message from your Lord, and this is his command. It's over. So basically, the angels came to give the bishara to Ibrahim السلام, that he would have a child, but this time from Sarah. Miracle. And Ibrahim السلام, before recognizing their identity, when he saw strangers, people from out of town, he said, Salam, qawmun munkarun. He said to himself, those people are strangers. They must be hungry. So immediately after hosting them, okay, if you look into the ayah, it gives you a very detailed explanation of the situation. عَلَيْهِ He admitted them to his house. He did not leave them by the door. Then he asked them, what brought you here? And what do you want? And uh, how did you know that uh, I'm living here? And what do you expect from me? No, he admitted them. He let them enter. دَخَلُوا already. They have entered already upon him. And they have entered while he does not recognize any of them. And that's why he said to himself, قَوْمٌ مُنْكَرُونَ Those people are strangers. So what am I supposed to do in this case? فَرَاغَ He slipped away. Some people, when they have a guest, they make a scene. So they call to order some food. Uh, do you care for meat or chicken? Shall I order like uh, a whole chicken or half would be enough for you? These are all signs of stinginess. You know? You're not supposed to show the guest that you are preparing a food for him and you're encountering difficulty in order to make food for him or to order food from him. It's your other really generous and you can afford it and you're going to bring whatever you can afford or stop talking about it. Because some people, you know, tend to be loud, attempting to inform the guest that you see, I'm struggling in order to serve you a meal. So what do you expect from the guest? No, 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 don't bother. You don't have to worry about it, we just ate. You know, this is natural. Now why? Because you are burdening them. They make, you're making them feel like, um, you know, I'm encountering this hardship, all because of you. So what do you expect from them? So faragha ila ahlihi. Have a seat, please. And he slipped away. And he immediately uh, brought the broiled calf, which took him some time. He did not make them feel that he is preparing the food. Why? Because they are strangers. They must be traveling for a while. And he brought the food. And immediately he brought it near to them. The ayah says, فَقَرَّبَهُ إِلَيْهِمْ He brought it near to them. This is generosity. If you look into the beginning of the ayah 24, Allah the Almighty described the daif, and the daif applies for singular and plural, because there were three. The guests of Ibrahim السلام, he described them as mukrameen, honorable. And if the guests are honorable, then the host is honorable too. When you have a neighbor and this neighbor, every other day or every weekend, he is throwing a party and he's inviting people. The type of people 
who are invited can tell what kind of neighbor do you have. The type of guests who visit the person can tell what kind of host is the host. When he invites righteous people, as the Prophet Sallallahu said, make certain that no one shall enter your house but a righteous person, and no one should eat from your food but a, a, a believer, which means that those who come so close to you and to your family should be righteous people. Otherwise, of course, we feed everyone, believers, and non-believers as well. Ibrahim السلام, never asked the guests about their faith or their belief. The right was hospitality. So he let them in and he immediately fulfilled the right and he brought it near to them. Then they didn't eat. فَقَرَّبَهُ إِلَيْهِمْ If you're traveling, if you're from out of town, as I expect, you must be hungry. And once the food is served, and if you're hungry, I'm not going to ask you whether you want to eat or not because uh, I figured that on my own and the food is already ready. Why don't you eat? So he was suspicious. Because when the person eats from your food, this is a sign of safety and security. But if the person doesn't want to eat from your food, you may suspect that there is something behind this person. Doesn't want to eat, doesn't want to drink in your place. So it is very suspicious. At that they revealed their identity and they said, Inna Rusul Rabbik, we are the messengers of your Lord in order to give you the Bishara, which I told you earlier. We'll take a short break and we'll be back inshallah in a couple of minutes. Please stay tuned. تدبرون القرآن. One day the Prophet وسلم, came out to the companions رضي الله عنهم and he said to them don't you bear witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship and he has no partners don't you bear witness that I'm the messenger of Allah don't you bear witness that the Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the companions of Allah and whom they said, Yes, O Prophet of Allah. Then the Prophet وسلم, said, فَأَبْشِرُوا Have the glad tidings, the great news as a result of this. Because the Quran has two ends to it. One end with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one end in your hands. Then he said to them وسلم, فَتَمَسَّكُوا بِهِ Hold fast to it because you would never be led astray and you would never be perished if you're holding fast to the Book of Allah. Because of that, join us every week in Quran in depth, where we recite and reflect and ponder over the verses of the Quran. We go in depth into the verses, following the ways of the Prophet ﷺ and the companions عنهم, when they used to take the verses, one set of verses after another. They would recite it, they would reflect upon the meanings of it, and they would act according to it, and then they would go to the next set of verses. Join us every week in Quran in depth so that we would recite and reflect and learn more about the book of Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our life and to make us among those who follow the Quran and the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa It's calling us to establish this hiwar, this dialogue between ourselves and between the non-Muslims, and to use hikmah. The waves are coming, you're trapped, fitna every is coming everywhere. How, how can I get out of this fitna that I'm in? Ah, uh, send me the rope. Why did Allah send the Quran to you, to all of mankind, as a source of guidance, as a, as a kitab, a blessed book to be reflected upon? And secondly, the ba'ath, the resurrection. 
Preparing yourself for Yom Al-Qiyamah when you're going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Aqeedah, this is the Quran of Aqeedah, this is the focus of the Quran. They want these dialects and these slangs to spread so the Arabs themselves can't even understand the Quran properly. This is a, ch this is a choice you have to make now. Because once the angel of death comes to you and takes your soul, there's no turning back. There's no other choice. In charity. To make the testimony is the base of the faith and the fast and the prayer, the pilgrimage in charity. Rasulallah, Habiballah. Rasulallah, Habiballah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Uh, this is a live edition of your program, Guardians of the Pious. The uh, second segment on our phone numbers, area code 002, then 0238551 or 132. My dear brothers and sisters, the second reference is relating to also the family of Ibrahim, السلام, his nephew, Prophet Lut, peace be upon him, who was a believer too. There were three angels when they delivered the Bishara, the good news to uh, Ibrahim السلام, that he would be a father for the second time and Sarah would be the mother for the first time in her life now he said what are you up to he said we're going to Lut why he knew that because Lut السلام, lived in a, in a city where the people were very wicked they do to practice some wickedness okay so he said Inna fiha Lutan. they said we know we know that Lut is there we're going to spare him and his family, but the rest we're going to take care of them. They will be utterly destroyed. So now Ibrahim السلام, feel safe that Lut will be safe and the believers around him. The ayah which I'm going to call upon you is one of the references which tell us about the story of Lut السلام, and those angels which would specifically refer to how a person should be generous and protective to his guests. Once they enter your house, they should be protected. But what happened is when the guests, those beautiful, nice looking angels, disguising as human beings, okay? As you know that Jibreel السلام, used to come to the Messenger of Allah, sometimes in the form of a human being, the Sahaba would see him as the most handsome companion, okay? Sometimes, like Dihi al Kalbi. May Allah be pleased with him. So when they appear in this very magnificent form, the people, the people of the city of Lut السلام, were not straight. They used to practice homosexuality. So they were after those men. And Lut السلام, was so scared because he knew that once the news spread that there are handsome men visiting Lut السلام, and they're from out of town that they are going to attack his house in order to rape those guests you see how evil they were to rape the guests again is the will so Lut السلام, was so frightened and he said, لو أن لي بكم قوة أو آوي إلى ركن شديد أو I wish I was strong enough in order to protect my guests. Had that Jibreel عليه السلام said, don't worry about it. We'll take care of that. Okay. Here, because he didn't have the power to protect them, and he was standing against the door trying to protect his guests, he offered his people, the evil people, he offered them something better, halal. Legitimate. He said, Haulai Banati. Those are my daughters. Now we're going to talk about what did he actually mean by saying my daughters. Let me quote the ayah upon you first. It's ayah number 78 of Surah Hud, peace be upon him. Wajahu Kaumuhu Yuhrauna Ilayhi Wamin Kabilu Kanu Yamaluna Sayat. قال يا قوم هؤلاء بناتهن أطهر لكم فاتقوا الله 
فاتقوا الله ولا تخزون في ضيفي أليس منكم رجل رشيد Here, as I said, the ayah is focused on a particular incident in this visit when the people of Lut السلام, came rushing to him why his wife leaked the news to those evil people that we have very handsome men at home come over and they had grown accustomed to their sinful acts he said oh my people these are my daughters they are purer for you so fear Allah and do not disgrace me in the presence of my guests is there not among you one man with rational intellect you see those people have been demanding uh, earlier, the people of Lut السلام, have been demanding uh, the expulsion of, Huda, of Lut السلام, and his family, with the exception of his wife because she was evil. And they said, Take them out, exile them. We don't want the people and his, uh, Lut and his followers here. Why? Look at the guilt. Because those people like to be pure, like to be clean. We don't want any clean people around. Can you imagine? This is a message for our brothers and sisters who are holding fast unto their deen, whether in non-Muslim societies or even in many Muslim societies who have, which have turned pure secular. They are attacking morality and they are attacking those who are religiously committed. They don't have an issue with a woman who is, you know, almost not wearing anything, revealing her aura, and they say, this is freedom, this is freedom, you know, everybody's free to wear or to tear. But when a woman chooses to be pure, if it is freedom, then everyone is free to cover or not to cover. But freedom is limited to nudity, to being naked, to being uh, in, in an illicit relationship. But to be pure, you don't have a room here. Unfortunately, this is happening in some of our Muslim societies as well. So the war is against those who are religiously practicing, religiously committed, those who want to purify themselves. Okay. Accordingly, Lut السلام, begged Allah for help, and then Jibreel السلام, revealed his identity to Lut السلام, and said, don't worry about it, we'll take care of them. And with one hit, he blinded them all. And in the morning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with Jibreel alayhi salam, left the whole town. Then he ascended to heaven. And he turned it upside down. Upside down. And while they were falling, all the wicked people, he saved Lut alayhi salam and his daughters. Illa mra'atah. But his wife was of the wicked. She used to assist them. So accordingly, they fell. And their homes, their stones, the rocks, everything was falling on top of them. So they were stoned to death. This is how the people of Lut السلام, have been destroyed. The appeal of Lut, peace be upon him, to his people, he said, Please, I beg you, those are my daughters. The word banati here, what does it mean? When I say binti, I mean my daughter, Ruqayya. I, I mean my and sometimes when I'm answering a question and a young girl is asking the uh, the question so I say my dear daughter okay metaphorically because you are in my daughter's age or I respect you and I appreciate you like my daughter it doesn't mean that I'm your bio biological father and in the Quran in Surah Al-Ahzab Allah the Almighty says to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam An-Nabiyu awla bil mu'minina min anfusihim wa azwajuhu ummahatuhum This is morally All the wives of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are our mothers Not biologically, morally Aisha radiyallahu anha is our mother Hafsa, um, Safiya radiyallahu anha Ummu Habiba, Ummu Salama, Zainab, the two Zainabs And so on so those are our mothers. And there have been, you know, many generations between us and them, and they are our mothers. Ummul Mu'mineen, 
رضي الله عنها عائشة or Hafsa or whoever any of those of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم so that means أي all the girls who are unmarried in town they are all my daughters if you wish I can get you married why don't you get married to girls instead of chasing after the men this is what he said to them it was not their evil was not limited to concealing their practice behind closed doors no it was so um, provocative to the point that they chased after the guests people out of town they chased after them so that's why they came knocking on the door of Lut's house we want those guests we heard that you have some nice handsome men we want them and he begged Allah the Almighty for help and then you know what happened so here uh, Lut was trying to his utmost to be protective by preventing those people from reaching out to his guests as long as and by the way the Arab even in Jahiliyyah before Islam once they were given a word like this person is in my protection that's it he would fight to death himself his family and his clan to protect this guest or the person who entered under his protection and the Prophet وسلم, said about the believers the same if any Muslim even the least person said this person is in my protection as long as he did not commit a crime then we shall respect this person and we shall honor this person okay the following uh, is simply insha'Allah um, some of the etiquette of honoring the guests um, such as uh, that the person is supposed to offer as much as he can afford no problem but sometimes a person have none literally have none it happened and the hadith is collected by Imam Bukhari when the Prophet وسلم, had a guest somebody from out of town and he asked his wives if we can host our guest one after another before asking any of the companions he is more worthy they have more rights upon the believers than their own selves he's my guest he's coming to Medina to learn about Islam he's my guest Aisha, Hafsa, Safiya, everybody says, Oh Prophet of Allah, uh, have you forgotten that? It's been three days, we have none at home, just water. We cannot afford, we don't have anything to offer to the guest. So at that, the Prophet وسلم, turned to his companions, We have a guest here who would like to take care of him tonight. So one of the Sahaba, Abu Talha, may Allah be pleased with him, the husband of Umm Sulaim, the mother of Anas ibn Malik, she's such a great woman may Allah be pleased with her said inshallah I shall take care of him ya Rasulallah it's an honor for me then he asked his wife if we have anything to host the Prophet's guest she said what a shame we don't have but the food of the kids he said let's do something about it so she put them to sleep without eating and then when he sat with the guest he turned the light off the oil lamp so that he would not see how much food is there and he would not perceive that the host himself, the household, didn't eat because they don't have food. So they offer all the food to the guest. And then when he ate, he went to sleep. And in the morning, he accompanied his guest to the masjid to pray Fajr. Then when Abu Talha entered the masjid and the Prophet وسلم, saw him, he smiled to him and said, لَقَدْ عَجِبَ اللَّهُ مِنْ صَنِيعِكُمَ الْبَارِحَةِ Allah is so pleased and happy with what you and your wife did yesterday. I love the term Sani'ikuma, dual. It wasn't only you, Abu Talha. You and your wife. One hand doesn't clap. In order to hear the sound, you need two hands. In order to have a righteous children, you have to have a righteous spouse. He or she both have to be righteous have to be on the same page when somebody makes the wrong decision and he marries maybe a woman who's not practicing she is not Muslim and he says inshallah I will bring her to Islam and she will start praying and what if she doesn't do that when he marries a woman who likes to wear all the new fashion clothes and the makeup and the perfume and she likes to go out like that 
and says, inshallah, I will make her a pious woman and she will wear hijab. What if she doesn't? And it happens. 10, 20, 30 years. And he goes out with his wife while she's wearing those very tight jeans. He can even dare to say no. Then they have a daughter. And like mother, like daughter. And he's the father of a girl who is revealing her aura because he doesn't have a say. On the other hand, when a girl accepts to marry a man whose job is haram. So she knows that from the beginning he is earning a lot. She said, but he promised me he will look for another job. Honey, when he gets another job and when he is completely away from the haram, come and knock on our door. I will be waiting for you, but not before that. Okay? Uh, you know that Umm Sulaim, her mahr, her dowry, was that Abu Talha should accept Islam. Okay? It's a, such a blessed family. So I love what the Prophet has said when he described Allah's pleasure. He said, Both of you are praiseworthy. Both of you, Allah loves you and appreciate what you both have done. Why? Because they give preference to the guests over their own selves. Then the ayat of Surah Al Hash, the ayah describes that by saying, and they give preference to others over their own selves. They were hungry. Their kids were hungry. But we have a guest. They gave him precedence. Why? Before Islam, it was not like that. Before Islam, it was nafsi, nafsi. Hmm? But they have done so. She, he said to her, Die for Rasulullah, the guest of the Messenger of Allah. Oh, welcome. And she assisted him. She helped them. They were on the same page because she knows that. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا إِنَّا نَخَفُ مِنْ رَبِّنَا يَوْمًا عَبُوسًا قَمْطَرِيرًا فَوَقَاهُمُ اللَّهُ شَرَّ ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ وَلَقَّاهُمْ نَضْرَةً وَسُرُورًا وَجَزَاهُمْ بِمَا صَبَرُوا جَنَّةً وَحَرِيرًا The ayat goes on and on in order to explain that the believers, whenever they offer the food, they don't offer it anticipating any appreciation from no one, not even the guests. Rather, they are only anticipating the reward of Allah. We're only doing so for the sake of Allah. We're not expecting any compensation or any gratitude from you. This is solely and purely for the sake of Allah. When this is the case, the person will be willing to give his heart, will be willing to give whatever he or she have. Why? The best I have for Allah, Qurbani, for Allah the Almighty. You see why the Prophet said, من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليكرم ضيفه Let whoever believes in Allah and the last day to honor his guest. Because this honoring and generosity and spending out of the little bit that you have to honor your guest is simply because you believe that Allah whom you believe in his oneness shall reward you in the hereafter as well because you, leave, you believe in life after death, a resurrection and in recompense. We ran out of time, insha'Allah, next time we'll continue with the etiquette of al-daif and al-mudif, the guest and the host as well, and we'll study the two ahadith which have been mentioned in this chapter. Until next time, I leave you all in the care of Allah. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته رسول الله حبيب الله الله our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he wanted humans to be the best and give his best religion to them Allah, our God, is the greatest, the one and only glory to Him. He wanted humans to be the best and give His best religion to them. So why did they ignore that, forgetting all about Him in paradise? 
We're shipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell and paradise We're shipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price